I really hate taking coolant to the face. Let's solve that problem with some machine brackets, a switch, and a solenoid. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So the only way to use the hose on a Haas milling machine is to turn the coolant on. But when you turn the coolant on, the coolant comes out of the spindle ring. Generally not so much fun to take a splashing of coolant every time you want to hose down the machine. And I'm intrinsically lazy. I don't want to reach up and turn that switch. On the VF2, it's not that bad. But on the VM3, you've really got to reach over to get to it. So let's solve this problem the smart way. The design itself is quite simple, but we put a fair amount of thought into should we use an Arduino or a PLC? What should actuate turning the coolant off or turning it on? With a strong focus around ease of implementation, but also long-term reliability. We didn't ever want there to be a case where we ruined a part or a tool because our device, which is just a device of convenience, interrupted the natural coolant mechanism at the machine. And what we realized is we never need coolant when the machine is at its Z home position. So we're going to use this waterproof roller equipped switch in conjunction with this normally open solenoid. What this means is that when this spindle is up, it will shut off the coolant, but if our device were to ever fail, the coolant would still turn on and flow. Hockey Pucks did a great job stabilizing this piece of angle as we were decking it and cutting the slots, and we can machine right through it. Engraving with the Tormach Diamond to Drag Tool. We love this because it's not sensitive to your Z height at all. The thing never wears out and you can go really fast with it. It does raise a burp, so sometimes we'll come back with the Superfly one thousandth of an inch above the part, or in this case, we're going to tumble it. It's no secret that we love the adaptive strategies, but sometimes you just want a slot. And in this case, adaptive doesn't really make sense because we're cutting a 0.26 inch slot with a quarter inch tool. You really need the slot to be about twice as big as your tool for an adaptive to come close to making sense. Here, we're going max RPMs on the machine, three thousandths of an inch feed per tooth, and we're stepping down in 25 thou increments, or about 10% of the cutter's diameter. Then we went for it, full depth of cut slot. It worked for a minute. We had to hit stop because we were getting some chip welding. My guess is it's a combination of chips being recut, which generates some heat. When that aluminum gets hot, it's going to gum up and chip weld into those flutes. But we're not giving up. On the widget today, to get this slot finished, we took it in three depths of cut. But we're gonna keep doing some testing on the side, so stick around, folks. I know we can figure out a good slotting recipe.
Next up, the post that will hold the switch and allow us to adjust the Z-axis location of that switch so it is tripped right when the Z-axis returns home. And welcome to the YouTube debut of the new ModVice fix side, as you see here on the left. A solid improvement off our prior version that allows you to either hold parts on each side or you can keep the talons and the solid bar both installed and you simply rotate it 180 degrees when you want to switch between the two. A quick toss in the tumbler to clean up our edges. And then a heat gun to loosen up that fitting to run this system in line. Another nice thing about this design is we were able to install the solenoid where we've got easy access to see it and maintain it. Doesn't have to be up at the top of the machine. I'm also happy. I love Arduinos. Things like PLCs are really cool, but anytime you can keep something simple, keep it simple. If you don't need an Arduino, don't use an Arduino. We've also used a waterproof switch and a waterproof solenoid, but it was probably overkill because we didn't have to install anything inside the actual machine area that is regularly exposed to coolant. When our machine's Z-axis goes to its home position or moves directly up, we've got an existing sheet metal part that's going to activate that switch. And when we activate that switch, we're taking the normally open solenoid and applying power to it and closing it, which shuts off coolant to the coolant ring. I also like the fact that we didn't have to modify our machine. We used existing sheet metal holes and features to get this done. Hope you folks learned something. Hope you enjoyed card here to the NYC CNC page. We've got a copy of the Fusion 360 file for this project. You could probably 3D print it if you didn't want to machine it. And we've got the bill of materials. Otherwise, folks, take care. See you soon.